All right. Um, trying to see if we have quorum here. One second. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today's exciting panel discussion on digital transformation trends. We've got a lot of folks joining the call today, which is fantastic. Uh, so I'm Henry Lee, Director of Strategic Partnerships at Armed Treasure Data. I'm joined today by Stefano Fanfarillo, Partner and Director, Personalization and Digital Marketing at Boston Consulting Group. And we're also joined by Lucas Borges, Senior Global IT Manager at Anheuser-Busch InBev. A recording of this webinar will be made available after the call. So digital transformation is something you've probably heard a lot of these days, but it's frankly a fairly broad term that means different things to different people. For this panel, we have a unique opportunity to explore digital transformation from the perspective of different players of the marketing ecosystem. So for some quick background, we've got Boston Consulting Group, more commonly known as BCG. BCG is a leading strategy consulting firm that advises global companies on strategy and operations best practices. A big part of their practice today involves advising clients on how to plan and execute effective digital transformation initiatives. We've also got Anheuser-Busch InBev, called ABI for short. ABI is one of the world's best known beer brands. As an end user of digital transformation, ABI is seeing firsthand how digital transformation gives them faster, more complete views of their end consumers. Digital transformation helps them deliver more personalized messaging, whether it's by social media, advertising, mobile, TV, and more. And last but not least, uh, Arm Treasure Data. We're an enterprise software company that develops customer data platforms, more commonly known as CDPs. CDPs help marketers collect, unify, analyze, and activate customer data so they can develop richer, more personalized experiences with each of their end consumers. As a software company, we are an enabler of digital transformation for our clients. Treasure Data was acquired by Arm in 2018. And if you haven't heard, Arm is one of the world's leading semiconductor design companies. 95% of the world's smartphones uses Arm technology, including the one you're holding in your hand right now. Arm designs a lot of chips that enterprises use to collect data. And Treasure Data creates platforms that help enterprises make sense of all that data. You can find out more about who we are in the attachments section of your Bright Talk screen below. We've been excited to work with both BCG and ABI in various digital transformation initiatives over the last few years. So without further ado, let's get started. So for the purpose of this discussion, let's first define digital transformation. What is it? So let's start off with a generic view. Roughly speaking, digital transformation is the use of quickly evolving digital technologies to solve business problems. Examples may include cloud computing where users can leverage always on, always updated subscription-based software instead of needing to manually update and maintain on-prem software. Think of how DocuSign, Google Docs, Confluence, or Workday have digitally transformed the paper-based workplace into a digital workplace. Digital transformation in the form of cloud-based software has made knowledge sharing and collaboration across different time zones and geographies faster and more efficient. Digital transformation may also involve changing the cultural mindset of organizations. Outsourcing the automating processes to the cloud may sometimes be viewed as disruptive to existing business culture and processes. How might companies change the, comp the composition and skill set of their teams to reflect the changing needs of a more digitally transformative organization? So now that we've set the stage, let's dive in. So the first topic, what does digital transformation mean to you and to your organization? I just provided one interpretation of digital transformation and would love to see, hear from our panelists on how they view it. So let's start off with Stefano. How would you describe digital transformation based on organizations that you've worked with? <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Ari, and uh, uh, thank you for having me here. Um, at BCG, we, we take a fairly broad enterprise view of digital transformation. Um, we think of the digital company of the future to what we call the bionic company, uh, where key outcomes are delivered through the combination of key technologies and human talent. So it, it's like a new paradigm, right? Powered by technology, harnessed by people. Um, therefore, digital transformation is, is the process and journey uh, for which organizations become bionic companies and, and unlock the potential. So 
uh, the way we think about it, we look at starting with those key outcomes the organization wants to achieve, such as a new digital business venture, uh, personalization at scale, and then build the required enabling capabilities to deliver those outcome, outcome you know, such as data digital platform, IoT technologies, uh, new ways of working to be more nimble, focused on stakeholder value, uh, and, uh, and attract the talent uh, to support uh, that new operating model. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's great to see to see from your perspective how digital transformation is not just software, but it's really sort of a, a, a process, an evolution within an organization. That's exciting. Um, and over to Lucas. So how is digital transformation being applied based on your past experiences? Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me here. So I, I think I brought some uh, what I think about digital transformation. I think it's a really fancy word today. And most people have an opinion of what, what digital transformation is. For me, digital transformation is when you transform the ways of working by applying revolutionary solutions that might have a clear purpose or have a design state with a positive impact. I think when you combine revolutionary solutions with a scalable mindset, which is able to adapt really fast, is where the power of digital transformation comes to play. I would like to share a funny fact which happens with me some years ago. One of my colleagues was taking an airplane to another state with, within Brazil to get that meeting up and running. Believe me, the reason why, it was because the telepresence and the equipment was broken and they need to replace it. It's crazy right nowadays. And on the other hand, we see today some revolutionary solutions that are really scalable, that can be accessible from anywhere, anytime with a simple device, such as a cell phone. Before, we need big rooms with expensive equipment to run a simple video conference. And now, the only thing we need is a device which is in our pocket to connect to a business meeting, doesn't matter where you are big rooms, expensive equipment, and hours make sure the meeting will succeed is in the past. Today's just a good story that I, I remember, but in the past, we should cry a lot to get a meeting up and running without any surprise. So that's how I think about digital transformation. Yeah, that's amazing. That's a great story. And, you know, even being able to, to connect today um, on this webinar across multiple time zones, different countries, different continents, it's, it's it's a real testament to technology and something that we probably couldn't have, could not have imagined you know a few years ago. So it's 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 quite it's quite amazing. Uh, awesome. So kind of uh, as a follow up, uh, let's talk more about trends we're seeing today in digital transformation. What did digital transformation mean before uh, you know a few years ago, and what does it mean today? So to Stefano, as an advisor of business best practices to major global organizations. How has digital transformation evolved over the years? What did it look like, say, five years ago, and what does it look like today? Um, that's a great question, Harry. Um, and, and definitely, I've seen changes in the last few years when it comes to um, working with different organizations in, in digital transformation agendas. And if I think about it, uh, there are, I, I would think about it in three dimensions for me, the, the scope, the scale, and the time frame. And, and, and let me unpack that for you. Um, so when it, when it comes to scope, a few years back, I would say typically there were department-led digital transformation agendas with very specific goals and specific uh, processes to digitize, such as e-commerce, for example. And so really speaking, they were uh, somewhat, I would say, narrow focus, again, really speaking. Um, if, we, if, if I look at digital transformation now, I, I think it's, it's generally enterprise-led uh, with the goal of digitizing the entire organization and it's orchestrated across different departments and units. For example, it's about digitizing the entire marketing, sales and service customer experience, not just, just the, the e-commerce side, for example. So they're much broader initiatives. Um, when it comes to scale, again, a few years back, I'd say the business impact would have been somewhat more limited. You know, on one end, of course, given the, the narrow scope uh, aspect that I just mentioned. Uh, but on the other end, organization limitations on, on their ability to scale the impact, given some of the required technologies, the human talent, the investment required. So 
many of the programs with a limited impact probably stay at that pilot stage and, and, and unable to scale at the enterprise level. If I think about scale now, um, the outcomes of the, that the business organization is looking for in digital transformation are, are much broader now. And again, on one end is to do with that scope of the transformation, uh, but on the other end, we definitely see organization have learned that lesson. They started with a much broader enterprise view with a mindset that that transformation need to scale at the enterprise level and, and making sure that it doesn't stay at that pilot stage. Um, and the other one, the last one I mentioned is time frame. Um, and digital transformation was a destination uh, with a specific goal, defined outcome, time frame to get there. Uh, programs initially would be created, achieve their goal, and be disbanded when the transformation goals were achieved. If I look at digital transformation today, digital transformation today is, is a continuous journey. Digital transformation involves a company really traveling the, the, a great distance. In, in fact, uh, in, in my view, I'd say a never ending distance. There, there's no end to that game. Um, the environment around us is continuously and rapidly evolving with new experiences, new channels, and new ways to interact the, with customers across um, multiple sectors. So, so organization needs to continuously um, adapt to the changing environment, adopt new technology, new data, new ways to interact. Um, in some organizations, we even see permanent uh, transformation offices being created to manage that continuous process. Um, so the key, is, it's, it's, it is, it's not longer a destination. It's not important about the destination, but it's whether the organization is traveling in the right direction and adjusting that direction along the way. That's that's great. Would you would you say that a lot of the 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 catalysts for organizations to embark on a digital transformation journey are you seeing it driven from the top down or the bottom up? It's days? definitely much more uh, higher in the organization than it used to be in the past. Much broader, enterprise wide, and and most more often than not, the C level um, agenda. So they need to be bought in onto the whole vision of digital transformation. Too. Yeah, I'd say in the past, you probably had to, you know, the way occasions you had to, to, to convince an organization that they need to transform and digital is coming. I don't think that's the case anymore. It's, you know, digital is here. Uh, it's, it's a fact of life. It's a way we operate today. And as I mentioned, it is more about making sure that you travel in the right direction and you adjust that direction as the environment evolves around us. Would it be fair to say that digital tra transformation is a kind of a one-way street? Once you've embarked on that path, you're not going to veer off it. Um, I'm not sure I would say that way. I don't think there is an alternative. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's just the way it is, right? And yeah. More and more... Uh, uh, experiences will be data driven, technology driven, will be digitized. So I don't think it's uh, it's 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 the only way street. I don't know what the right word for that is, but I don't right. think it, I don't think it's an option. And, and companies, organizations know that. Fantastic, great. Well, moving on to Lucas here. So as a practitioner of digital transformation, uh, why has this been so important to ABI on a, on a strategic level over the last five years? And and how is ABI viewing digital transformation today? Yeah, so I'm gonna just would like to complement and add in our perspective on what Stefano was saying, right? So today, uh, I think it's a hot top for every single organization, doesn't matter what size you are. Hmm. And things that were count as an expense before, for many people now, we are seeing with a good eyes now and treat it as an investment opportunity to grow the business. At ABI, we take it really serious. We understand that if we combine good ideas with our passionate people, we can really make the difference. A good example is our infrastructure at ABI was ready even before the pandemic exploded, right? And focusing on our employees, ABI was able to send all of, all of our office employees around the globe to home, to their home during the quarantine period, and they're still there. So we were able to su support the business, business running even from home, right? And it's a big thanks for our, our leadership, which is driving an amazing agenda about digital transformation. 
Also, connect to that, we are getting digital transformation to support us during the pandemic. Our customers and the community, community using our mindset of transformation to the business in an agile way. Good examples that we have done is like, we adapt our lines to produce from hand sanitizer to face mask shields without knowing how to do it. Mm. To our consumers' donations, ABI mm. were able to support big time local pubs and restaurants. So answer to you, I think the big G, the, the digital transformation at ABI is driven by a good agenda and great routine from our people. That's great. And, and it, it sounds like, you know, ABI was very, very forward thinking in terms of planning ahead. Maybe no one could have predicted this pandemic um, and, and how it's affected people's lives. But because ABI was able to think ahead of the game, let's just say, was able to plan and apply digital transformation early, early on, you've been able to really kind of weather this, this, this pandemic, the stay at home culture, as you kind of mentioned. Uh, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think it's true because we have a culture in ABI that everything is, is not only top down, but it's bottom up as well. So I think everyone is, is embracing the company, the digital transformation, which has helped us big time to be ahead of things as we are right now. That's that's amazing here. Uh, OK, um, well, let's move on to um, our next topic here. Um, so we're getting some some questions coming in, and we'll probably kind of save that kind of uh, for for later on. But uh, you know, thanks everyone for some of the, the feedback here. Um, all right, so let's shift gears a little bit and talk about specific verticals that are using digital transformation, in particular CPG companies. So a goal of savvy marketers is to understand as much about their customers and consumers as possible. Developing a direct relationship is key, whether it's through social media, email, mobile, or events. Yet for many CPG companies, it's been challenging to understand what their end consumers are doing. Most CPG goods like soda, laundry detergent, or cereal are still distributed through intermediaries like retail stores and supermarkets. It's hard to see what your end consumers are thinking if the CPG company is not really there at the store. So to Stefano, how are CPG organizations using digital transformation to better understand how consumers view their brands and products? What are some examples of digital programs and technologies they're using to establish a more direct-to-consumer relationship? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, again, I agree, Chris. And, uh, first of all, you, you're absolutely correct. And uh, we have been seeing increasing importance and demand from uh, CPG companies to be able to leverage customer data to improve their marketing activities in particular. It, it certainly started in the digital media <clears throat> and digital identity domain. But given current changes in the ecosystem, uh, the attention has, has been shifted towards uh, that first-party customer data. And I'd say digital itself, in fact, has opened a number of opportunities for CPG companies to be able to collect and leverage customer data. Um, some example that comes to mind, and um, some CPG companies that have built capabilities to deliver specific customer experiences to collect um, customer information and establish that direct consumer relationship. I mean, our research and experience shows that the consumers are open to share their information in exchange of values. So. Mm -hmm organization must build, must build something that delivers value to the consumer. Uh, one example that comes to mind that I really like is my loan app by Scott's, uh, the grass seed company. Mm. And you, if you use the app, you can plot the characteristics of your loan, like si size, location, and, and they produce a loan maintenance schedule for you. And, and of course, they recommend their products as part of the loan maintenance plan. I think it's a good exchange of value. I, I have no idea how what to do with my loan, but you know, <laughs> I use the app and and I literally print the picture and 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 go to Home Depot and say, okay, I, I want this product. So works for both of us. Um, some companies are, are taking this to the extreme and launch direct to consumer businesses. Mm. Collecting data may not be the underlying goal driving this, right? Of course, there must be a business opportunity behind it, but, but surely data is one aspect of doing that. Um, really recent example that comes to mind is, uh, for example, is Ready Refresh by Nestlé, uh, direct to consumer delivery of their products, uh, water, sodas, and so on, on a subscription model. Again, an opportunity to create a direct to consumer business, sell your products, and build uh, that customer relationship that enables you to collect data on the consumption. 
Um, another example is two or more companies coming together to share the data in a clean room environment. Uh, mm. We see that typically you would see a CPG company and a retailer coming together and, and kind of merge their data. Some of the key use cases uh, could be optimization of marketing co-op dollar, um, supply chain optimization, and so on. So uh, those are some of the um, f- examples I come across, but much greater interest in, in building the digital capabilities and the technologies from CBG companies to collect, store, leverage that data. Well, those are some great examples. I'm, I'm sure the, uh, the lawn maintenance app must be doing really, really well uh, as everyone's kind of staying at home. And you, you've kind of got my, you know, my, 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 my mind working now. I might just have to download that app to see how I can manage my lawn. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, but to your point, I, I totally agree. I, I think, um, you know, we, we sometimes talk to our CPG clients and, and they're also echoing um, how they're in, in employing different types of programs like mobile apps. Uh, or like DTC, direct consumer uh, type of initiatives, um, you know, as a way to so better understand the mindset of of their consumers that they frankly don't see every day. Um, so that's great. Um, so to Lucas here, um, so ABI is one of the world's best known CBG companies. I mean, who has not heard of Budweiser? It's like everywhere. Um, Yet, while consumers may know a lot about Budweiser, how much does ABI really know about their end consumer? And what are some ways ABI is using digital programs and technologies to better understand who's consuming your products? Yeah, I think that's a really great question, right? And I think one of the biggest challenge for a CPG company like us is really how to connect direct to consumers and how we can break this wall with them. Uh, and I think to support this mindset, ABI has been building our direct-to-consumer channels with loyalty programmers, our own brew pubs, and also much more like websites, digital webs, and, and, and so on. And then with all these data points that we have, ABI needs to have a way to connect all of these channels in a single database to, to understand a little bit more about our consumers and where we'll be able to be the unified consumer understand and have the opportunity to learn more about our consumers. Here at ABI, the CDP is our sing- single source of truth, taking, talking about our consumer data. And it's positioning in a very strategic place into our MarTech stack today. Oh, that's, 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 that's great to hear. Um, uh, just curious, but uh, so when you first embarked on on uh, getting a CDP to help uh, with your your customer journey, um, h- how has that played out, um, and and how do you see CDPs, uh, you know, helping ABI out over the next five years? I think CDP, like to combine with another platform that we have in the Martech, is going to support us big time in the future. I don't know how the world is going to look like in five years, but I see at least from the three years from now, I see CDPs being play a big role. I think before we were not able to connect all the data signals that we have within the company. And now with a CDP, we can connect all consumer signals into one centralized database for the entire company, right? So with that, we are able to apply all of our learnings and machine learnings and all the algorithms that we have to understand a little bit more about our consumers. And then once we find something that is interest for us, we can scale it very fast into our business, right? Having this centralization into a single place. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And again, it also echoes stuff that we're seeing from, from our clients. You know, a long time ago, people were excited about big data. They, everyone just wanted to get their hands on data. But what they realize is that you got to connect the dots. Data is not very useful unless you can connect the dots and make sense of all the different data sets. So what a CDP does, it's really able to help connect the dots, centralize everything to user words to make sense of, of, of these things. And, and I think because of you know, digital transformation, a big part of that is really understanding the, 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 the customer journey. And, and yeah, I totally agree that CDPs are, are an essential part of, of kind of giving clarity into um, all the, 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 the the tidal wave of data that, that people sometimes face. That's great. Cool. So moving on, um, a topic that's top of mind for everyone these days, um, it's COVID. 
So the current pandemic has changed all of our lives in significant and unforeseen ways. Many of us are now working from home, glued forever, it seems, to our laptops and Zoom meetings. Twitter and Facebook recently announced that a large number of employees can continue working remotely even after the pandemic subsides. How has today's work from home culture affected how businesses are embracing digital transformation? So to Stefano, how do you expect organizations to embrace new digital technologies in our new normal? <clears throat> Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, obviously, as you said, we've seen uh, consuming, consumer behavior shift, right? Everybody is, is working from home um, and large adoption of digital uh, products and services, e-commerce search, uh, banks, digital sales and services, because branches are closed, are closed excuse me, delivery services, telemedicine, teledoc, and, and then adoptions or an expectation of safe operations as well. So we've seen uh, some uh, uh, large business changes in, in, in the ecosystem, right? I mean, some example, Amazon to hire 100,000 new warehouse and delivery workers, Instacart adding 300,000 workers, uh, banks across countries considering uh, which branches to close permanently, so deciding not to reopen them at all. Uh, and so on. So uh, companies, I mean, if I think about organization, they certainly have adopted, of course, a number of technology and very rapidly to um, to uh, adapt to this changing environment. I mean, if I think about technology themselves, I mean, e-commerce and, and digital experience management is certainly something that uh, it, it serves. I mean, many conversation at the moment with organization around how to uh, improve books, those capabilities, um, digital marketing capabilities as well. Uh, it's one that, uh, you know, we've seen an, an increase in, in, um, in demand and relative to traditional media, obviously, I mean, overall marketing spend has come down, but relatively speaking, digital is increased relative to traditional, you know, no sports events on TV, for example. Um, and data capture and dissemination, so really being able to disseminate information quite rapidly in the organization, especially given current uh, um, current environment, keeping employees uh, uh, and customers updated. Um, yeah, if, if, again, if I think about this data signal as well, um, it's interesting. We see also demand from uh, uh, bringing together those external data signals uh, and merging them with internal data. Um, you know, somehow uh, many organizations actually go, you know, I, I guess like everyone else, got caught a little bit off guard, given though that some of the signals were, were already there. Like you think about the out of stock items now, if you go to a store, many things you cannot find. And so there's definitely a great interest on uh, being able to now better lever leverage those external signals and bring them in and merge them with your internal signals internal data to manage better operations. Uh, for example, if you think about uh, companies that have uh, like uh, quick service restaurants like mm -hmm. McDonald, Burger King and so on, uh, they have many operations and, you know, taking all those signals across the country mm -hmm. to really understand where to reopen, when to reopen and so on. That's an important aspect. And then uh, the last one is definitely around um, uh, the, the talent changes as well that we see given the greater automation and digitization, right? So this remote working, physical location requirements and, and actually opening up even uh, different opportunities for organizations, right? So some organization perhaps in the past thinking in certain geography or certain city, you couldn't get certain talent. But now, actually, everybody's working remotely. So it's almost like that psychological barrier goes away and therefore opening up different opportunities for an organization. Yeah, I would definitely echo your points. You know, I think that, uh, you know, before this pandemic happened, I mean, there were some companies that were, were pretty open to work from home. I know my company was pretty open to working from home. But I think that there's some... Uh, organizations that were a little bit reluctant. They thought that uh, employee productivity would would kind of drop. Yeah. But surprisingly, uh, productivity is actually increased in some cases. Maybe it's because everyone has nothing else to do except be on Zoom. But, you know, uh, jokes aside, I, I, I think that digital transformation has actually uh, it provided a lot of tools that bring together people across time zones and geographies 
different offices um, in a way that people can collaborate where they couldn't before, before digital transformation. So I think that that the, you know, COVID has actually been, you know, an experiment that's mm -hmm. actually led to some, some, you know, pretty good uh, outcomes in terms of proving that people can be very productive while working from home. So I think that that's great. Yeah, I'd say an experiment as well as an acceleration uh, yeah. of the digital transformation agenda. I mean, we're seeing some tremendous acceleration actually on companies getting on the uh, trajectory of change that that was being planned for 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 years perhaps, and now being executed in weeks right, instead of of months. So definitely acceleration on that. Totally agree. Acceleration. Good point. Um, Cool. And then off, off now to uh, to Lucas. So how has a pandemic and resulting stay at home culture affected your ability to reach out and understand your consumers? And how might this affect future uh, ABI marketing initiative? Yeah, guys, uh, just talk a little bit about our future here. I think uh, not. I think we, we have a dream about bringing people together for a better world. We produce such an amazing product, beer, and beer has been bringing people together for centuries, right? And during the pandemic and the results of staying at home made us to think and find creative solutions to connect with our consumers to help them go through this tough moment. One of the great initiatives that we put in place was the live music festivals, where ABI, even during the pandemic, could bring people together to forget a little bit about the hard time. To give you an idea, the world record for a live stream festival was for BLC, around 500,000 people connect at the same time. And then ABI during the pandemic really broke the internet, bringing the, at the same time, two million and a half people. And not, not only that, plus donation of foods, right? So what I wanna say here, I'm not really know how it's gonna end up, but I'm sure the world will, I'm not sure how the world will look like after all this, but I'm certain that all of us will need to rethink and reinvent every day and make sure our business can react to any threat or opportunity really fast. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this has been a, a certainly a big learning exercise for a lot of people and it's actually, Fantastic to hear the ABI is really, you know, doing a lot to, you know, bring people together um, in spite of all the challenges that we're facing today. Um, so that's that's great to hear. Um, okay, so uh, another topic about is the uh, the economic climate, the recession. So a result of the current pandemic is economic recession, which we're now uh, all experiencing. In past recessions, we've seen advertising and marketing budgets get slashed. And we've seen new strategic programs uh, being put on hold. So we'll start off with Stefano. Uh, how has the current recession impacted digital transformation initiatives across organizations? What verticals have been affected the most and what verticals have been least impacted? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, the, the impact from the crisis varied uh, significantly by sector right if, if you think about a surge in essential retailers like your Lowe's on depot that's seen record sales to the other end of the spectrum to a complete shutdown on non-essential retails like fashions and so on uh, travel and tourism highly impacted uh, professional service organization like ours i mean working from home and rapidly adopting new working ways and uh, uh, you know staying at home and and leveraging e-commerce as well but um uh, broadly i mean we have seen an acceleration like we were saying earlier an acceleration in digital transformation given the changes in uh, in workers and consumer behavior so for example there is you know we've seen up to 25 percent overall e-commerce increase right um in, so some people used to joke we've seen 10 years of change combined in in a few weeks right what mm -hmm. took so much to get where we are today from a, a digital transformation perspective, we really made tremendous, many organizations have made tremendous amount of progress in just a couple of months. Um, consumers having to stay at home and, and physical locations such as stores and branches being closed and new formats being piloted. So some of the initiatives we see, <clears throat> see obviously the surge in e-commerce transformation and service optimization uh, for many organizations. 
Um, digital, as I mentioned earlier, digital media increasing relative to non-digital and the kind of optimization technology that comes with it. Um, omni-channel capabilities, again, another uh, major area, click and collect, for example, buy online, pick up in store, um, surge in uh, digital sales and servicing uh, from uh, financial services, uh, a huge demand, huge area of transformation at the moment. Um, telemedicine for meds, med tech sector. Um, and another interesting one is uh, a B2B organization going B2C, uh, like, for example, restaurant suppliers that now uh, deliver and serve consumers and, and having to build the capabilities to support that, that change. And so overall, um, um, major acceleration on on digital pro programs and in some cases what we've seen what, what would have taken six months typically it's now been done in six weeks so really many organizations stepping up to the challenge actually and, and with that right focus being able to deliver um the other aspect is there's also digital transformation related to the organization workforce and safe operations so a lot of digital technology being introduced in there uh, investment in digital technologies to enable safe restart uh, if you think about tracking and tracing, remote working, operations management, um, safe contactless interactions uh, through the use of digital for, for customers. So those are some of the areas we've seen, uh, um, you know, organization being very active. And, and then there are some companies that are looking also at the longer term uh, aspect of the impact. Um, you know, some of them we talked about, like the, the talent workforce strategies, for example. Will I have the same uh, type of resources that I have today if everybody's going to be working remotely, remotely? What kind of new opportunities could be open to us? What kind of physical locations do we need to think about that we have today we may not need in the future and so on? Well, that's great. You really touched on a lot of great things. E-commerce, telemedicine, B2B to B2C, safe operations, safe restart. It sounds like digital transformation, to your point, it's amazing how it's actually accelerating during when during times when, when things are slowing down, you would think. Um, so, you know, sometimes people might imagine digital transformations being kind of uh, almost like a very strategic uh, kind of initiative. But it sounds like the reverse is true. It's becoming much more central, much more core to success, um, even in times of a, of, of a recession. So that's actually really, really fascinating to hear. Yeah, absolutely. I think organizations uh, have been very smart and, 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 and many of them acted very fast, adapted very quickly and reallocated investment very quickly. I mean, I've heard from organizations that I say that they, they, they did things in uh, six weeks that typically it would have taken six to nine months between planning, execute, testing and do, you know, make sure that it works and so on. Now in six weeks is up and running. They surprised themselves and realized that, you know, if, if we put our mind to it, uh, we can do things. So this has been an, a great experience on one hand, I would say, when it comes to uh, the organization, that digital transformation agenda. Well, that's great to hear. Great. Um, all right. So, Lucas, your turn. Um, how has the current economic environment affected digital transformation uh, at, at ABI and, and from, from your perspective? Uh, it affects big time, right? Things that were priority before are not, are not anymore. However, our digital transformation agenda is still a key piece to our business growth. Mm. I'm sure all areas will be impacted, but during the pandemic, marketing really makes a huge difference by connecting and bringing solutions to our consumers. Of course, respecting all the challenges we are facing as a community right now. And it's not the end. I think to survive in this new world, we really need to stay curious, bold, and resilient to keep learning and adapting ourselves to this new world. Yeah, that's 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 good to hear. I mean, um, it, it sounds like you know digital transformation is still very very central uh, to ABI. Uh, you know, even during a pandemic, even during a recession. So uh, that's remarkable. Um, so the next topic then, um, it's around culture. Um, so a big part of making digital transformation successful involves people. 
Often it requires outsourcing existing processes to external systems. It means getting the support of internal teams, not just to get trained on how to use new platforms and services, but actually using the systems in a meaningful way. And in some cases, it means right-sizing uh, existing teams and resources to accommodate new technologies. So to Stefano, what are some examples where organizations that wanted to embrace digital transformation encountered cultural or organizational challenges in implementing their goals? And how do they overcome this? <clears throat> Thank you. I mean, this is another great question, right? The, the human, human factor is that third leg of, and, and most likely the, the most important leg of that bionic company I mentioned before, right? And, and in fact, when we talked about digital transformation, um, we often use the ratio 10, 20, 70 required to deliver the change, where 10% is about data analytics, 20% is the technology, and 70% is about the people harnessing the data and technology. So really the most important factor when it comes to a transformation. And in fact, digital transformation programs are generally a catalyst uh, to drive organization realignment, breaking existing silos. So the initiative take an end-to-end -end customer view generally um, of the journey and, and, and require a different level of collaboration, configuration uh, to deliver the desired customer experience. I mean, the two most common organizational challenges that uh, I typically see are, uh, you know, the organizational silos and the availability of talent skills. I mean, organizational silos are just a result of the way business has been contact, conducted um, successfully until the point it no longer works. Uh, but operating structure are then so embedded at that point that companies really struggle to change or even see their need for change. Um, and talent and skills the challenges emerge as a result of seeing this need of change, uh, but finding itself in a place where the organization just doesn't have the um, what it takes to, to enable the change. Um, in fact, uh, talking about customer data platform, uh, you know, well, in particular, we find gaps uh, in, in advanced science and the use of the technology, such as marketing technology. So I say customer data platform, right? One of the key features of a customer data platform is, is to expose the richness of the customer data for the marketeer to use. Uh, but does the marketing operation team have the right data and technology skills to lever these key features? Um, you know, sometimes we find they don't, they don't have them and, and they need to learn. So that's certainly um, a barrier that we see, this, this need for data and technology skills. Um, we have seen a number of uh, strategies employed by, to, to overcome those challenges, right? Some of the, the key ones uh, at the broad level you know, obviously senior leader sponsorship or appointment uh, of a senior leader to drive that digital transformation agenda. Uh, for example, a new head of e-commerce or, or a senior leader appointed uh, um, to transform a specific customer experience, such as a home buying experience, for example, for uh, a financial service institution. Um, some of the cases have seen uh, the creation of a separate organization or even a company to incubate innovation and drive the change. Um, for example, I worked with a financial service institution which created a complete separate digital agency in a separate location with the goal to attract different type of talent, develop new digital practices, and eventually embed those back into everything that the company does. Uh, another one that uh, um, we, look, we, we work with organizations is that build, operate, transfer. So use an external provider uh, to develop the, a new capability uh, have the external provider operate it in parallel with the company building out uh, the required talent and working ways and then transfer it back once the organization is ready to take the new capability on. Um, so some, some example, and of course, they're not mutually exclusive, right? In fact, we generally find a combination across those strategies that organization need to employ in order to to drive that transform that digital transformation agenda. Yeah, that's that's great. I mean, and, and I was just a little bit surprised to see. Yes, I mean the 10, 20, 70 rule that you kind of talked about, where seventy percent of digital transformation really involves the people. Um, so it really kind of drives home the fact that transformation is not just about the technology or the analytics. It's really about the humans, the people involved um, in making it all happen. Um, so over to Lucas, uh, 
So how does a complex global company like ABI with hundreds of offices worldwide get alignment to embrace new digital technologies? What's a typical rollout plan? Yeah, on top of what you guys just said, I think what really makes the difference you have this is to have the senior leadership embracing together, right? Here at ABI, we really believe that technology can transform the business. Even though we have many offices around the globe, we work in a very agile and aggressive pace, connect everyone to the same goal and sharing the knowledge worldwide, which makes a huge difference for us, right? I think being global does not mean centralization everything. I see it like an extension of local teams. And by having a big picture of what is happening around the globe, make our rollout plan successful because we can replicate in scale what works better in each market, right? So that's how we apply here. That's that's awesome. Yeah, that's uh absolutely echo those those points here. Um so we actually have a lot of pretty nice questions here um and you know would, would love to take to take some time just to uh to kind of share and and you know get some thoughts here um so one question here is this um can the over reliance on existing customer data lead to failure of digital transformation initiatives for example in situations where digital transformation initiatives are based on prediction of future consumer trends which may not always be reflected in current uh, customer data. So I, I guess the question is about, you know, a crystal ball where, where we have customer data um, and we're using it to kind of predict the future. Um, but in some cases, um, you know, that that may not pan out. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off, Lucas, and then um, pass you over. Um, I think, uh, you know, one aspect for me is it's it's always to start with the goal, right? What is that you're trying to achieve? And then from there, what is then the data and the technologies or the modeling that you may need to resolve so for that goal? So starting with looking from the bottom that the data is a problem, uh, potentially a problem, could just you know lead to solving an engineering challenge that perhaps may not exist or may exist, you know, maybe you don't have the right data, but always start with a goal and then look at what data technology you need. And then if the data that you have doesn't solve for that, there are many uh, opportunities at the moment in, 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 the, in the industry to actually get external data, for example, to supplement your existing data. So we see many organizations doing that today, buying first party data, third party data, and so on from many different sources, if that's required. But the key um, point for me is always start with the goal, what you're trying to achieve, and that will dictate what data and, and modeling you need. Yeah, and then I think I just to chime in here, I think technology, I think it's the easiest piece on this conversation, right? At the end is a computer, talk with a computer. If we don't have if we don't have a good strategy where we want to go and where we want to achieve technology by technology is not going to support us so i think i agree 100 percent with stefano i think the first step is to understand where we want to be and how we're going to achieve that and then start bringing technology together to achieve your goal when it's needed if it's not needed let's just go straight to the path that's what that's my take on it Great. No, I totally uh, agree with that. Um, there's another interesting question. So it's true that digital has now become the only quote unquote calamity proof channel. When you started to see store closures or drops in productivity, what did you do to adapt digitally? So this might apply for uh, orgs that maybe you've worked with uh, Stefano or maybe with an ABI if, if you've seen certain pubs or or different uh, retailers uh, be affected uh, with with the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, I I could say personal experience. Um, um, I think at the beginning there was a, a lot of anxiety around uh, productivity loss and, and so on, but realistically, I mean, our work has not seen enough client works. We have not seen much uh, productivity anxiety. So I've been quite uh, um surprised and impressed in fact 
how uh, people have adjusted very rapidly to the new ecosystem and new environment. And uh, I mean, yes, we are all day plugged in front of our computer on on Zoom calls and so on. But um, the level of productivity is has been pretty stable as far as I can see from the work that we do and and, and the clients that we work with. So it's been quite surprising how they adjusted. And and uh, and, and you know, of course. Digital is a, a key enabler of that, right? We we work in uh, remotely now, and we need to connect digitally. There is no alternative to that, and so uh, I think people are, you know, workers and organization have adjusted very rapidly to the environment. Great, and and, and Lucas, have you actually um, since you know ABI, you you work very closely with some of the distributors, maybe the store level. Um, the pubs uh any any have you gotten any kind of uh observations on on how sort of like the smaller operations doors those that really rely on having physical footprint um has been affected and how they may have embraced digital technologies to uh to stay productive yeah i can't i think uh, the the local the the, the 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 smaller stores they were impact big time the ones that don't does not have an online shop i think i just give an example what we have done to support them we, we create like in colombia it's called ajuda la carta which is like uh which is like the the stores nearby you so the consumers were able to open the mobile and then check the stores nearby them that they can purchase from that specific customer right so we were supporting the customer big time uh, during the pandemic based on and the consumers as well, because consumers was trying to look for something, but every single store was closed. How do I go? Right. Mm -hmm. So and then with their, their their cell phones, they were able to open the, the map and see what are the store that could deliver uh, their products in their house. So I think we could support them. But I think the other in the other hands, we have seen some good example of people leveraging technology that already exists, right? So for example, I, I have friends that they have their own pubs, they were using WhatsApp and mm. also Instagram to receive orders. So I think the mindset is not, how can I build something, but how can I get advantage in something that's already there, right? Mm. So I think that's the mindset. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, you know, WhatsApp, uh, I, when I when I go to South America, I, I everyone uses WhatsApp, so um, that's definitely um, you know big down there. Just curious, but for that for that uh, find your closest uh, uh, pub for or store uh, in Colombia was that something that ABI built or is that something already there? No, we we build internally, so we have a digital products team uh, internally that we we have some uh, initiatives that we're running to support during the pandemic our customers, which mm. is our, who sell our, our products, right? Without them, you know, it's, we're gonna, it's gonna be a hard time for us to exist. But so we were trying to bring some good ideas of how can we could support them. So we put some digital products in place and then people could connect to them and they could still selling even during the pandemic. Well, that's great to know. That's that's it's it's heartening to hear that that something something as big as ABI is actually so supportive of sort of the smaller, uh, you know, mom and pop shops that have been affected more uh, by by this economic crisis. Um, another question: um, So, of some of the new uh, digital adoption initiatives that have happened, do you think any will be implemented permanently once the world starts to reopen? So, if anything, you know. Digital transformation, to your point earlier, Stefano, it's kind of like a, a journey. Um, but are any specific things that we're that have come from this pandemic that will be part of our, our permanent life after this is all over? I, I, I would think so. I mean, uh, for sure, um, remote working, for example, is going to be something that um, it's it kind of in some shape or form, it's here to stay. I mean. Even talking from personal experience, our organization is looking now what are different models that we can actually um, adopt for our workforce, uh, given you know our traditional work or being on client site every week and so on. But are there in fact uh, alternative way that we can uh, conduct our work 
uh, with our clients, given it's actually working now. So I'm, I'm not suggesting that we're going to be remote for the for, for the foreseeable future, but uh, I think there's going to be some changes, some impact that are opening up um, different type of opportunities and definitely opening up uh, a different way of looking at the problem or potential challenges for organizations, right? Um, and I mentioned earlier, you know, talent sourcing, for example, is definitely something that is going to be interesting to see how it evolves, right? Now that the organization relies, uh, well, actually, we can work remotely. I don't need to find a local resources here in my town, which is, I don't know, perhaps it's not, uh, not easy to attract, but I can work with somebody remotely where the talent exists. And so definitely uh, we'll see some long lasting changes uh, from, from this digital, from this pandemic and some of the digital aspects that have been introduced, there will be long lasting some organization in some shape or form. Great. Um, any, any thoughts, uh, Lucas, anything that's gonna be become permanent um, from this, hopefully temporary pandemic? Oh, I think that comes to my mind is actually uh, what Stefano just describes. Also, we, we have been seeing uh, the live music festival coming big time. So we have seen some good startups popping up in San Francisco that's trying to let this kind of new business. So how the people can from their home see their artists and then enjoy the time. So I think this is gonna come, I don't know if it's gonna be permanent, but I think it's gonna come big time as well uh, for that one. Great. And probably have time for, for one more question here. Um, so I really like how you point out that a cultural concern with digital transformation um, is happening. We've been faced with every new technology that is introduced in the workplace. Um, it's not bad now as younger people adapt to new technology more easily. But I'm curious, though, how do you get corporate or cross-team buy-in? That is, different teams have different priorities and ideas on how to move on with transformation. So this kind of goes into our earlier theme, like, you know, it's yeah. a lot of it's about people. Um, you know, what are some ways of, of getting uh, buy-in from senior leadership if, let's say, you know, you're kind of in middle management or you're in a division that's, you know, that's, that's maybe – more removed from a lot of the, the where decision making is happening. Yeah, I mean, actually, my experience, uh, one of the key um, aspect is that, you know, one of the points uh, I made earlier around uh, um, senior leader sponsorship or appointment on a senior leader to drive that particular agenda. Um, without a doubt, uh, there is a need for um, uh, that level of top down support in order for uh, those changes to permeate uh, the organization and, and, and actually uh, also, um, you know, stand over time because in some cases they come and appear. Um, another aspect is also taking that broader view of that, that change, that transformation that as, as we talked about, right? For example, <clears throat> customer media platforms, uh, given, given our, a sponsor here um you know sometimes i, I see companies that uh, tackling uh, those uh those technologies perhaps with a, a narrow focus like maybe it's just about the data or it's just about the analytics or it's just about the activation and so on instead of taking a a, a broader view and and uh, of course engaging a broader set of stakeholders in the introduction of that technology and buying into that technology. And if not doing that, uh, certainly I've seen the risk of falling short of the overall uh, uh, transformation goal and agenda that was set at the beginning. So really taking that broader view of what is the key outcomes that we're trying to drive and engage all the relevant stakeholders to drive that outcome. Yeah. Great. Any and, uh, yeah. yeah. And for my, for, for all my take, I think here at TBI, I think the leadership really thinks that the, the technology can transform the business. So we have open doors there. But I think one, one key point that we need to think when we are talking about technology, right, is more like how we can make it simple 
I think simplicity is the key here. Like if you try to build something that is very complex, and then when you go to the user, you bring them this kind of book for them to read to use the platform, man, I think the chance of failure is like big. So I think if you try to go simple and then don't bring complex to the things, you need to resolve complex things yeah. by applying simple solutions, right? So think about the WhatsApp, think about the Instagram, think about Facebook. Who has a, a manual for that, right? They launch features and, and things every day and nobody has a manual for that ever and everyone knows how to use it, right? So I think the mindset is like, how can we go simple and then I think that the, the resolving complex problems with simple solutions, simple mindset, I think that's the key to drive a, a good uh, mindset and, and get adopt, adoption from our users using the technology. Totally agree. Beauty and simplicity and elegance and simplicity. I love that. Um, so with that, hey, everyone on the call, thank you for joining. Um, I think this has been an amazing panel discussion, lots of great insights. Thank you to Stefano and Lucas for, uh, for the time today. Again, a recording of this webinar will be available after the call shortly. Um, and thanks again for everyone for, for being part of this, this great panel. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Right. Very, much, Bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.